being a tier 3 college student that too from the ECA department applying for CS positions now it's a very difficult part there were two screening rounds like an aptitude round which consists of some 100 questions yeah the maximum salary offer for me is from the ion trading mm -hmm. which is 14.5 lpa uh, i started exploring the machine learning and artificial intelligence data science domains wow. i reduced 80 percent of the cost by using the multi-processing i connected four cameras with the raspberry pi like uh, i was developing an ats friendly resume so that it gets shortlisted on the career portal so far you have asked this question to me a number of time that if you are a college student and we have just graduated then there are opportunities for the fresher in the industry or not will we be able to crack the job opportunities in the data domain like data engineer data analyst data scientist because companies are mostly looking for the experienced candidate but one thing i can definitely guarantee you that after watching today's podcast you will not have this question ever because our guest speaker has actually made it possible and he just graduated and cracked five off campus offer that too for the data analyst role and with amazing package. So watch this podcast till the very end because his experience is going to be super helpful for you. And again, a quick announcement that our fast track data engineering bootcamp new 1.0 batch has started. It is going really well. Folks are enjoying the live classes. And if you also want to enroll in this affordable data engineering bootcamp, then link is in the description. I will see you in the live classes. And really soon we are launching our two most awaited bootcamps as well. One for the data analyst and one for the Python. So stay tuned. So thank you so much Viru for joining us in this podcast. Really excited to have a discussion with a fresher who cracked the data analyst role recently. But it would be really great if you can give a short introduction to our audience and anything you want to talk about the academics and the offers you cracked. Thank you Sashank so much for having me here. Myself Virupaksha Gupta. Uh, I have born and brought up my I have completed my entire education in Davangere, Karnataka. I'm an electronics engineer from GMIT. Recently I cracked five different uh, offers from different companies. They are Latent to analytics as a data analyst, at Ion Trading as a technical analyst, at Daimler Truck as a JIT, uh, which is the parent company of the Mercedes Benz. Uh, I'm much more interested to know more about your engineering life, Viru. How did it go for you? How it started? And what were your plans during the college time? And how did you upskill yourself with new tool and technologies during, during your college time itself? As I said uh, earlier, basically I'm an electronics engineer, but I was interested in the CS domain. From my first in, uh, year of the engineering, I wanted to explore as much uh, domains as possible. So that uh, I thought like explore all the domains so that I can get my best fit. In my first year, it's all about like learning the programming languages like Python, C, C++, Java, learning groups concept, DBMS concepts. And in the meanwhile, I started the hacker rank. Uh, like uh, solving every day some 5 to 10 problems. Also, I started lead code. Within a year, I got a gold badge in both Python and Java at the hacker rank. In the meanwhile, I started to learn from Udemy and NPTEL. In the second year, I started exploring the cybersecurity and ethical hacking field. Uh, it's all about like uh, learning about Kali Linux, uh, Linux commands, networking organizations. And I also started developing some small Python games. Mm -hmm. Uh, as an electronics engineer, I learned some Raspberry Pi, ESP, Arduino, you know, like with the embedded C, I done some micro projects. Mm -hmm. In the third year of my engineering, uh, I started exploring the machine learning and artificial intelligence, data science domains, wow. where I done the projects like uh, image recognitions, neural networks, uh, it consists like artificial neural networks, RNN, CNN, mm -hmm. LSTM, everything. I started my third year with an internship at Everlytics Data Science mm -hmm. as a data engineer. The Everlytics company works at the 4.2 industrial automation and after third year I had another internship at A Robosoft as a machine learning and data science engineer. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile I spent some very good time with the startup ecosystem where I had very cool connections and networks with many startup enthusiasts and investors at Deshpande Startups. Mm -hmm where I met very super cool people. When it's all about the fourth year, I started exploring some cross-platform application development languages like React Native, Flutter, mm -hmm. where I developed some small Android, up, Android and iOS applications, but I haven't launched it for the Play Store. Just by watching the YouTube and Udemy videos, like I was exploring. 
after all the thing when i came for my eighth semester i decided that i will go into data science domain mm-hmm. i came into conclusion after exploring lot of domains i will dive deep into ml and ai and this is my part like this was a journey of my throughout the four years of engineering as you mentioned you have cracked the five job offers specifically for the data and the stroll so all of these job offers from the off campus or on campus and let's say if they were off campus so how did you get these job opportunities yeah yeah uh, they were purely off campus oh, because wow. during my third year when i came into third year from my seniors and myself i got to know that my college does not have some pretty good campus like a uh, barely some service based companies with the 3 to 5 lpa maximum offer comes here for the bde or the sales department roles i was like i learned python java everything for this 3 years now i want to go for a sales role uh, it does not uh, giving me a joy Mm-hmm. for that reason being a tier 3 college student that to from the aca department applying for cs positions now it's a very difficult part every time i was facing the questions from interviewer like you are from aca domain why you are searching for cs role <laughs> that was my question every time for a interviewer was asking that and uh, uh, it's like i was re- rewriting resume every once in a 15 to 20 days like uh, i was developing an ats friendly resume so that it gets shortlisted on the career portal because uh, everyone knows like uh, around 10000 to lakhs of resume comes for a recruiter it's very hard for them to shortlist right. for my latent view in the term it was through the national level hackathon conducted by the latent view mm-hmm. and for the ion trading it is uh, the talent acquisition partner Uh, Sarim Moin, mm-hmm. uh, uh, he messaged me through the LinkedIn like there is an open position in the Ion Trading. You can come and apply. Okay. And uh, for the da- Daimler truck, it's like I applied through the email. Uh, I got a referral from an employee. Mm-hmm. Uh, he helped me much. Whatever job offers you cracked so far, uh, right? What was the maximum salary you offered to you as a fresher data analyst? And I want audience to listen to this. <laughs> yeah the maximum salary offer for me is from the ion trading mm-hmm. which is 14.5 lpa like a uh, 12 lpa was fixed and two was variable and there is some 50 to 75000 as the reallocation bonus awesome uh, it's a good product based company b2b uh, company mm-hmm. and uh, as a data analyst uh, i got a 9.3 lpa job offer from the latent to analytics at the 22 uh, if you are in six figure it's uh, kind of a happy for me too as you mentioned you explored a lot of domains so during college how did you figured out i basically want to know that pinpoint moment where you got to know that yes data domain is something which enjoy working and i will be like opting data related job profiles as my career profession so what was that pinpoint moment as i said earlier like uh, every time i wanted to explore all the domains like it can be an android web or it can be cyber security or anything hardware uh there was a moment th- the turning point for me uh i was developing a facial recognition attendance system during my fourth sem uh, where i watched from my youtube and i learned more about neural networks and i started it and uh, luckily uh, during that year i got to know about the smart india hackathon uh there was a problem statement given by the government of maharashtra which is os871 they are saying uh, we need a automated uh, attendance system for a large number of students it should be a scalable system end to end system and it should be low cost system i was very happy because i was developing the same thing uh, and uh, the problem statement was almost matching for me mm-hmm. i just made a team of my friends and get a good guide and i applied for the uh, uh, sh like uh, with some four slides of pitch mm-hmm. uh, it consists of everything like uh, i had an unfair advantage like i already had a prototype i uploaded the youtube link mm-hmm. after that i got a 36 hour hackathon in which uh, i sh- uh, there was lot of like uh, it was completely coding coding uh, there was no sleeping at all mm-hmm. uh, around some 4 to 5 rounds uh, during that time i got to know that what was my potential at the last two hours of the hackathon my model was accuracy was less Okay. I changed the entire model under the convolution neural networks at the last two hours of the hackathon, <laughs> and it came around ninety-eight to ninety-nine percent of accuracy. Wow! And also they wanted low cost. I reduced eighty percent of the cost by using the multi-processing. I connected four cameras with the Raspberry Pi so that uh, with the parallelly the four different facial recognitions were taking place, yeah. and it was completely end-to-end scalable system. 
and what the thing everyone can ask I, I if i go for the github i can get the facial recognition library easy what's special in your project i developed the liveliness detection system mm -hmm. in which that i know how to spoof any system i know so that i try to spoof it like uh, for my system if you show the video photo eye blinking emotions everything you can try to spoof a person it will say it's not a person it's a spoof mm -hmm. only if a live person comes into the camera it will detect as an attendance. This is one of the major point uh, which was there in my project. Mm -hmm. And throughout this journey, it's uh, show me, uh, the, uh, we call something as a hidden talent. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to know like uh, I am enjoying this process and uh, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence is what I need to be in the future. I guess so far we talked about your journeys and all. Now the freshers who are watching this podcast, they want some more help from your side. So as a fresher, what all data domain related skill sets you acquired and how? As I said, like uh, from the first year, I started learning Python along with the Java. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I started learning SQL, like uh, it can be uh, uh, as basic as CURT statements and as high as uh, window functions or uh, it can be a uh, sub query, stored procedures, mm -hmm. everything. You need to master the SQL. That's the SQL is something like a building block mm -hmm. for every data science domain. And uh, I had, I kept some time for hacker rank, lead code, gigs for gigs. And uh, learning these libraries gave me a good handle like uh, Pandas, NumPy, TensorFlow, Scalar, Keras, Seaborn, Matplotlib. And these are the things which are mandatory to be in the machine learning domain. And later uh, learning the neural networks like ANN, RNN, LSTM. And uh, I also started some projects like uh, stock market price predictions uh, with some uh, you need to explore all the algorithms like uh, we can't go for one algorithm and uh, one algorithm cannot fit for every model mm -hmm. later i started learning like how the data processing is done cleaning super scaling everything after that uh, recently i started learning the visualization tools like a tableau it can be a power bi uh, because these are most important as a data analyst right and uh, i have got some three certificates from nptl uh, they, are, they are Python and Java, mm -hmm. uh, which have the gold and the topper badges from IIT Karakpur and IIT Madras. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, this was all the roadmap, like uh, you should learn Python, SQL, uh, little DSL. I, I don't uh, say for the advanced level, this was the mistake which I had to do. Yeah. The intermediate level of the DSA is enough for uh, any data roles. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like uh, not a graph level or dynamic programming, it's not needed that much. Absolutely. And uh, having the knowledge of uh, overfitting the model or the cross correlations, uh, having the knowledge of heat map, these things are important for data visualization. Mm -hmm. Like this uh, was the journey for me. So can you share your overall interview experience as well in different companies as a fresher for data analyst role because you crack four or five offers. So if you can share that experience, that would be helpful for the audience to understand. If you come for latent analytics, as I said, like uh, it was a national level hackathon, around some 5,000 people were participating across the India. There were two screening rounds, like an aptitude round, which consists of some 100 questions, mainly like uh, uh, DBMS, OOPS, OS, English compressions. Uh, these kind of questions were there for two hours. After that, in the technical round, we'll be having some four questions, one SQL, two from Java and one from Python, like uh, alteration and manipulation of CSV files using pandas. After that, I had around 48 hours of hackathon in which three problem statements were given, nine sub questions for each of them. I need to explore all the algorithms and develop a machine model which has the best fit, like cleaning of the data sets, everything I need to do and find the accuracy. After that, I had a technical round. In the technical round, it was most like uh, solving a Python program or solving some SQL queries like uh, what uh, how the execution flow of this SQL query. The interviewers uh, mentioned an SQL query, which like uh, select runs first or group by function runs first. You need to say like it was. Uh, after that, uh, there was a brain teasers and puzzles. Like uh, there is a famous question. There are 12 coins which is the defective coin using the seesaw with the minimum number how do you need to find oh, those type of questions after that we have some like a uh, culture fit uh, future fit rounds stakeholder rounds 
case study and evaluation rounds will be there at the at the ion trading it was like a case study round uh, culture fit future fit evaluation rounds behavior rounds these are rounds which are done at the in person at noida i on delhi they done all these rounds okay after that uh, there is an hr round which is the final round which is common in all the interviews like uh, it's all about like uh, what you want to be in the next 5 years where you want to see yourself in the 5 years and uh, if the client uh, interviewer himself behaves like a client how you will talk with them this kind of things like your soft skills your uh, attitude matters the most as a fresher a uh, one common question again a lot of fresher struggle to get job opportunities for the data analyst role so what did you do differently which helped you to seek the attention of recruiters and getting these number of job offers first thing and foremost thing i want to say rejections are must uh, like you should be ready to face the rejections because there is no person who is so perfect for any job like and uh, one my advice for every student is like never rely on your college placements if you are like me from the tier 3 college you should not uh, keep on expecting that some person is going to come and hire me from my college please come out of your comfort zone uh, like uh, if you sit uh, and uh, you think let companies come towards me it does not going to happen and uh, what the foremost thing i done i have built the solid linkedin profile in the past 6 months like every day i used to check the linkedin profile and uh, at for every 15 days or for every one week i uploaded one post what i have been learning and what i have been doing currently and uh, as i said earlier every 15 to 20 days i have been uh, rewriting my resume and also making like it is an ats friendly so that uh, in the 15 days you have won an hackathon or a coding competition you need to mention that or remove any other unwanted thing because keep the resume short and clear and uh, as a fresher you need not to know all the technologies because interview also does not expect from you you just need to show that you are able to work and you are able to learn stay humble stay hunger like uh, uh, the you should not be pro data scientist for an uh, data analyst in entry level role like you should have the relevant skills and that's enough like uh, you should show that if uh, tomorrow uh, they give me a project on data engineering from next week i am be i will be able to work and deliver the outputs in the best innovative way that's what an interviewer expects from the fresher okay. so mainly focus on your communication and be confident and one more thing like never lay on your resume that's the most important factor please uh, because uh, this is the mistake which i done in my earlier like uh, i used to uh, put lot of things in my resume like it was like uh, scrambled like uh, the interviewer asked me which way are you going are you are going for cyber security are you going towards app development are you going towards data analyst like how can i know so that keep your resume short and simple impressive i guess we have covered a lot of things are very very informative and to the point things for the audience we do so thank you so much first of all uh, to join us for the uh, podcast and share your wonderful experience with our audience and as a fresher i know today a lot of aspiring data professionals will feel super super motivated that they have saw someone on my channel who has done this thing off campus solid learnings during the college time so there are a lot of key takeaways from this podcast so thank you from my side and from the entire audience side thank you so much this video motivate at least 1000 students from my side i am the most happiest person in this world like uh, motivation for others is what i need so that is what i had in this amazing podcast i'm pretty sure you would have enjoyed videos experience and most important entry level freshers this is the true motivation for you so make sure to follow those strategies and preparation road map which viru has shared with us if you find this podcast really informative then make sure to give a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel then hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon i will see you guys really soon with another amazing podcast till then just keep exploring data